Okay, so in this video, uh, we will look briefly at comparing two independent samples. We will consider two types of differences, a difference of two means and a difference of two proportions. Now in the case of difference of two means, you will see that other than the new statistic, everything else works the same. And so we'll leave that up to you. But we will discuss in this video a difference of two proportions in the case again of independent samples. And the reason is that there is a subtle change in the statistic whether we try to construct a confidence interval for a difference of proportions or decide to run a test of hypothesis. So let's look at the setup. Suppose we have two samples. So we have sample number one. And we have sample number two. Suppose that we have in sample number one a total of n one subjects, and in sample number two a total of n two subjects. If we're considering a proportion, we will consider the proportion of subjects from each sample that have a given characteristic. So we could think of, well, in sample one, say, out of the N1 subjects, R1 possessed the desired characteristic, and in sample number two, out of the N2 subjects, R2 do possess the desired characteristic. And so then you could say, well, from sample one, the proportion of subjects that do have the characteristic is R1 out of N1, and of course the value of q1 hat, the complement is simply 1 minus p1 hat. The same goes for sample 2. We are saying out of n2 subjects, r2 have the desired characteristic, and so our sample proportion, p2 hat now, is r2 over n2. And of course its complement, q2 hat, is simply 1 minus p2 hat. Now the question is, what is our statistic in the case of, say, a confidence interval? Right? We know that p1 hat is an approximation to the real proportion of population 1, and p2 hat is an approximation to the real proportion in population 2. Now, again, we will look at confidence intervals for the difference of the two proportions. So what if this is our setup? What if we're trying to look for a confidence interval for the difference between the true proportion from population 1 and the true proportion from population 2? So this is for confidence intervals. for our difference of true proportions. And again, we assume here that the samples are independent of one another, so they may even be of different sizes. So n1 could be 100, n2 could be 70. It doesn't matter. Well, so here's, in the case like this, our statistic. It will be the difference between the sample proportion, so p1 hat minus, two, minus p2 hat, minus the true difference of proportions, which is our parameter here, p1 minus p2, over the standard deviation, which is the root of p1 hat, q1 hat over n1, plus p2 hat, q2 hat over n2. And this will follow approximately a z distribution. As long as, and there are two ways you can look at the condition. For this to be accurate enough, we need the use of the central limit theorem. So you could require n1 and n2 to both be above 30, but there is a slightly stronger requirement, and that is the following, that n1 times p1 hat is at least 5, that n1 times q1 hat is also at least 5, and the same goes for 
P2 hat and Q2 hat. So N2, P2 hat is at least 5. N2, Q2 hat is also at least 5. But for us, we'll be very loose with this as long as we have two samples of says at least 30, we'll assume that we have a good enough approximation. So, if you think now of building a confidence interval, as always, given a confidence level, you would find your two z-scores, zc and its negative, and then you would simply have this between zc and negative zc, and if you multiply up by this lovely square root, you will have the difference between the sample difference and the true difference, therefore you will have the error. So the error will be the critical z-score times the square root. So the root of p1 hat, q1 hat over n1, plus p2 hat, q2 hat over n2. And if you then isolate your parameter, the true difference between the two proportions, you will end up with the following confidence interval. So your parameter, the true difference of proportions, will be at most the sample difference of proportions plus the error. And of course, as always, the left-hand point will be the difference of our sample proportions minus the error. And that's it. And as I've said, you can easily derive this as we usually do by looking at this between zc and negative zc. Multiply up by the square root on both sides. Subtract the sample difference of proportions. Negate. And you will then have isolated the true difference between the true proportions p1 from sample 1 from population 1, sorry, and p2 from population 2. And this will be your confidence interval. The question is, will we have the same statistic when we have a test of hypothesis for P1 minus P2, or will the statistic will slightly be different? And the answer is actually yes. There will be a slight change in our statistic when it comes to a test of hypothesis for P1 minus P2. Let's look at what that change may be. So consider our two hypotheses, right? We will always be under the assumption of H0, and then we will formulate H1. Well, we're considering a difference of two proportions. As always, H0 is the hypothesis of no change. Therefore, H0 will always be that P1 minus P2 is equal to zero, that there really is no difference from the proportion of population one and the proportion of population two. In H1, of course, there will always be three possible hypotheses. We could claim that P1 minus P2 is less than zero, negative, or we could claim that P1 minus P2 is bigger than zero, or a slightly weaker statement that P1 minus P2 is simply not equal to zero. Now here's what's interesting. Let's look at this for a second. We will be under the assumption of H0, and so if P1 minus P2 is 0, the assumption therefore is that P1 is equal to P2. Now think of it, we had a sample, sample number 1, coming from population 1 with N1 subjects, and R1 of those had the desired property. We took a sample from population 2, a sample of size N2, and out of those N2 subjects, R2 had the desired characteristic. But now think of it, under H0, we get the assumption that P1 and P2 are the same. And so the proportion in population 1 is the same as the proportion in population 2. And the idea is we can then combine our two samples into a larger sample. And this is the idea of pooling our two samples into a single one. 
because under H0, if the two proportions are the same, we can treat both samples as coming from the same population. This will give us a larger sample, and the reason why this is a good idea is it will reduce our deviation, so make for a more accurate prediction. So what will happen? Well, we have our pooled sample. We have n1 subjects here and 2 subjects here, so we now have in total n1 plus n2 subjects, and out of those, r1 plus r2 have the desired characteristic. And so we have two new proportions. We will call p bar the proportion from the pooled sample, which is the total number of subjects with the desired characteristic, r1, plus r2, over, of course, the total sample size, n1, plus n2. And, of course, its complement, q bar, which simply is, of course, 1 minus p bar. And now with this idea, and again, this is only justifiable under the assumption of H0, that both populations have the same proportion, and so we can pool our two samples into one larger sample, and now I have a new estimate for the proportions, p bar and its complement q bar. Let's see how that will change our statistic. So if you remember, for the confidence interval, this was our statistic. So it was p1 hat minus p2 hat minus p1 minus p2 over the square root of p1 hat q1 hat over n1 plus p2 hat q2 hat over n2. This is approximately z. Now the difference will be, if you think of it, under h0, we can take that these are basically the same, so we can factor both of these, and you'll be left with the proportion times its complement times 1 over n1 plus 1 over n2. And the idea is, well, which one do we take? Do we take p1 hat q1 hat? or p2 hat q2 hat. The idea is under h0, we have a better estimate. We can take the pooled proportion and its complement. And so what we have as our statistic will be p1 hat minus p2 hat minus p1 minus p2 over the root of p bar q bar times 1 over n1 plus 1 over n2. And so this is our statistic in the case of a test of hypothesis for a difference of two proportions. And again, we could, has, we could have as a requirement to have a, a good enough approximation that n1 and n2 are both above 30, and it's the one we'll usually go for, but there is also a slightly more restrictive condition, and that is that n1 p bar, that n1 q bar, that n2 p bar and n2 q bar are all bigger than 5. But for us, we'll be a little looser. We'll just go with as long as both samples are above 30, we'll have a good enough approximation. So always remember, when you look for a confidence interval for the difference between two true proportions coming from independent samples, this is your statistic. In the case of a test of hypothesis for the difference between the two proportions, this is your statistic where p bar and q bar are the proportions and the complement coming from the pooled sample. And this is only again justifiable under the assumption of H0 that both populations have the same proportion, and that is why they can be combined, or two samples can be combined into a 
larger sample. In our next video, we will consider an example of a test of hypothesis and a confidence interval when it comes to difference of two proportions coming from independent samples.